Yeah. This is Geek Therapy Radio. What are we waiting for? And now your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. We are going to the moon. Nick, 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 nick. We are going to the moon. Nick, 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 nick. 2024. Mission Artemis. Plans to put... Why am I talking like William Shatner? Plans to put the first woman on the moon by 2024. A guy is going also. It, th- the point is that we are going back to the moon. The government has seen fit to budget uh, one over over $1 billion to NASA over the next five years or so in a very specific and very uh, resourceful way intentional to go to the moon. It's not just, well, we might go to the moon with this money. No, the, NASA's on it. This is the point. We are going to the moon again in 2024. Now, this begs some questions, and obviously, no, I'll, I'll stay away from the political stuff. I asked, I mentioned this on Geek Therapy Radio before. Oh, welcome to Midweek Geek, by the way. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. I mentioned this before on Geek Therapy Radio, an episode way long ago in a galaxy far, far away, that I asked my 96-year-old grandmother, who I should get on the show, by the way, I asked her about going back to the moon and space exploration. This is before the news dropped that we are going back to the moon by 2024. This is several several months ago, if not over a year ago. What she thinks about all that, and basically, she thought that it was just a waste of time in a waste of of resources and i kind of made the draw the parallels that you know kind of came to the conclusion that a lot of i could understand why a lot of the the generation who 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 was there when we went to the moon the first time in 1969 and through the early 70s might not see the point in going back to the moon you know if i was 90 in my 90s would i would i place personally would i place high priority on a going back to the moon or seeing another moon landing if i had already seen it and i had been further you know lived in this world where things seemingly get increasingly worse and worse which by the way that's a fallacy things are not getting worse and worse this is the best period of time to be alive as a human being ever ever Ever, this is the best time to be alive. Now, of course, there's case-by-case differences, and yes, you can talk about different uh, people and and, uh, cultures that are suffering in the ebb and flow of human suffering, yes. But right now, on the whole, the Earth and the population is doing pretty well, too well. There are a lot of people on Earth, and there's no signs of slowing down anytime soon. So anyways... That is kind of one voice of the older generation, and their voice is certainly valid, and I can certainly see the merits to what they're what they're saying. There's a lot of issues here on Earth that we need to figure out that perhaps some would argue is better deserving of funds and resources and, and human energy. But at the same time, we uh, I'll, I'll just say it like this. Maybe it's too doomsday of me to say it like this, but... While we are taking care of our own planet, maybe it's not uh, the worst idea to have a plan B exit strategy. If you catch my drift, the sun, as it grows older, continues to expand and subsequently, no matter what we do with climate change here on Earth, no matter how good we are to Mother Earth... The planet will still heat up due to the ever-expanding sun that humanity and humans and life itself cannot survive on the earth no matter what we do over the next millennia coming up, over the eons. So while we, yes, I'm not saying don't take care of the earth. Yes, take care of the earth. Don't be a slob. Don't throw your friggin' Whataburger bags out the window. Don't litter. Don't... Don't sit there just idling your SUV in the driveway for no freaking reason. Although, as an American, you are 
damn sure free to do that if you want to. I'm just suggesting that you don't. I'm just suggesting that as a species, we not be wasteful. I'm a I'm a geek and I'm a big fan of efficiency of doing things with the least amount of energy put into the machine, so to speak. So, no, and it's very simple. I put it I've heard it kind of put like this. The worst thing that can happen from addressing climate change is that our Earth is clean. And then I'll put it another way. The worst thing that can happen from addressing climate change is that we have a nice place to live. Even if it's all schlock. Even if it's all just complete. Uh, oh, is there a helicopter taking off across the street? Interesting. Even if it's all a complete farce. Even if climate change isn't real. Global warming isn't real. Even if it's not true. The worst case scenario from assuming it is true is that we have a nice place to live, that there isn't a bunch of trash around us, that there isn't a bunch of slop and disgustingness in the ocean, that our food tastes good and isn't poisonous. So I don't care, really, really don't care where you land on climate change, because the end result of treating the earth better is that we have a our living space is cleaner. It's a nicer place to be. So anyways, yes, while we do that, yes, while we sit around the drum circle and, and play our bongos and kumbaya to make the, the earth cleaner, kumbaya, my lord, and blame different political groups for their action or inaction on the subject, plan B is an exit strategy because no matter what we do there with the earth we're we gotta go sometime we need a new arc we need a new way to save humanity and as many as much of life as possible so we need a new arc essentially and this is what the moon is we're not just going to the moon in 2024 to have a picnic it's to set up a moon base a base of operations to go to mars and beyond to explore any sort of resources on the moon that we can use to facilitate, I don't know, rocket fuel or building settlements, habitats. I don't know. We're going there for a purpose. We're not just sightseeing. And I've said a long time ago on Geek Therapy Radio, and it's it's no this is no surprise to anybody. This is not a shocker. This is a very common idea is that the path to Mars starts on the moon. Not necessarily. We, you can go to Mars on a one-off mission from Earth to Mars. Yes, you can absolutely do that, but it'd be much more energy efficient to do it from the moon that has a fraction of the gravity of Earth. That means the exit velocity, you need less fuel, and blah, 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 blah. It is pertinent to the survivability of humanity that we make it to the moon, and we are going back in 2024. Now, the name of the mission is Artemis, which I always adore how nasa names these different projects project gemini project apollo project mercury i love the naming scheme artemis is the twin sister of apollo and since artemis is a female and 20 part of 2024 is sending the first female to the moon it is so cool and so fitting that they name the next mission to the moon artemis after apollo they are related, they are twin brother and sister, and I just think that is the coolest thing ever. Ever. There's already been rumblings on the internet, of course. Where else? I, I, by rumblings, I mean I saw one comment. There's always one person that just can't that just can't let us have nice things, so to speak. There's a baby outside the studio, I think. There's always one person in the room that can't let us have nice things. They'll find anything they can, you know, to say negative about a good thing. And maybe it's just my white male privilege that didn't think of this. But somebody was already complaining that it was a minority, uh, that it's uh, it's most likely a white woman and a white man going to the moon. So what does that happen? What? What? First of all, that is not that has not been settled who in the right mind is going to immediately assume that it's going to be two white people going to the moon? What? 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 This is a nice. Th oh, I, I was I was mind boggled. I did not engage this person. I very very rarely engage the trolls. I very rarely feed the trolls. But why? Why are you already ruining it with 
politics. Why? The crew hasn't been chosen. And already we're making it a big politically divisive thing. Ridiculous. We're going back to the moon in 2024. That's amazing. Let's cherish this advance in technology and in science and progress. Why do we have to, why do we always have to, we always have to piss in the bathwater. Always. We can't just get into the tub for a nice soak, a nice bubble bath without dropping a deuce in it. Why? Yes, of course, that's just my own opinion. And you know what? If I never read this comment, it still would never would have arised, you know, in, in my mind. So, I, I, frankly, I don't care who they choose for, for the crew, as long as, as it's one male and one woman, as long as it's the best applicant suited for the job. And women, by the way, scientifically make better fighter pilots and better astronauts. They can handle the G-forces better. They handle stress better. They can manage situations better than men. They have a higher survivability than men. Women make perfect astronauts and fighter pilots and test pilots. A woman's biology is perfectly suited for space travel. So it's not even that it's we're trying to be politically correct with this. It's just that putting a woman or putting a woman on the crew is just the best odds that we can succeed in the mission. You know? You get what I'm saying? It's a good thing. Going to the moon is a good thing. The fact that it's going to that a woman is going to set foot on the moon is a good thing. The fact that Americans are going to launch a mission from US soil containing americans to land on the moon that's a that's a win for the united states that's a that we can be very that's a badge of honor we went to the moon thus far we are the only uh, human beings to set foot on the moon why not go back to the moon you know what the first moon landing did and i'll start wrapping this up because i'm at about 12 minutes here the first moon landing united the world it wasn't just it wasn't just something for American ego. Of course, it it had that effect on American ego. We were the first to go to the moon, yes. But it united the world. We It wasn't Americans. It was humans setting foot on the moon. Humans setting foot on a new world, achieving something great, greater than ourselves. As a planet, we celebrated as a collective whole. It was such a symbol of progress, such a symbol of what we can do as a people, because it's not just white men at NASA. It was a lot of different nationalities, genders, people from all races and religions and continents and corner consonants, continents and corners of the earth and cultures that collectively got humans to the moon. It was a joint effort by Everyone, and it was beautiful in that way. Going to the moon in 2024 is going to be that again, but even more diverse this time, even more uh, diversity behind the scenes. It's a beautiful, great thing. Let's celebrate it. I am super stoked. I am super stoked. I'm so happy right now. Uh, thank you for listening. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the Geek Therapy Radio podcast if you haven't already. Also, make sure you visit the YouTube channel, Geek Therapy Radio on YouTube. I recently surpassed 1,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for that. It is kind of blowing up right now. I, I thought it was going to take me. I made an announcement like a week ago that, you know, in the next few weeks, I'm going to break 1,000 subs. I broke it in like two days after making that announcement. So thank you very much for that. Geek Therapy Radio on YouTube. I can put so much cool stuff on there that I can show you because right now you're listening and that's great, but I can show you cool things on YouTube as well. Uh, thank you for sticking with me. Please embrace your inner geek. Do not be ashamed of your inner geek. Maybe you've shoved your inner geek deep down inside because maybe Dungeons and Dragons wasn't cool or society didn't accept whatever nerdly endeavor you were a part of. And I'm not talking about anything extreme or gross. I just mean there's no reason why you had to put away your Lego set. There's no reason why you had to put away your Star Wars figurines. There's no reason why you had to put away your comics. 
As an adult, we can make decisions about how we spend our time in the day. And it doesn't mean reading a comic book doesn't mean that you have to avoid other responsibilities. Reading a comic is something that you do for yourself to keep you sane so that the other 99% of the day you can function. That's the whole point of being a geek. Some of us are lucky to turn our geek things into careers. People working at NASA, people working at the museum, scientists, idiots talking on the radio, like me. <laughs> but we can all be geeks no matter if we're not working in our geek thing. Come home and just embrace your geek. Find a geek thing, rekindle it, discover something new, and just know that I love you, you know? Know that I love you, know that you're not alone, that even though I haven't met you, that I do care deeply about you and, and your well-being. And hopefully by me doing that, someone listening to this right now can take that encouragement and encourage themselves first and then encourage others and spread some goodness in our world. That's my only mission here. Thank you for listening to Geek Therapy Radio this week, midweek geek edition of Geek Therapy Radio, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care, everybody.